Hello everyone, my name is Rocio Martinez and together with my classmates Juan Cáceres and Joan Martinez we will solve the question about the video National Geographic Mega Factories, Tesla. Let's start. The first question, what is an electric car? An electric car is based on conventional cars. The difference is that it does not use gasoline or electricity. The idea to create it came from the high expenses that were made in other cars and the gases that they release. These new vehicles by using electricity reduce the cost of fuels compared to other cars. There are also more silent than the, nor than the normal cars. The question number two said, what is the company ethos and which ones are the ones at Tesla factory? Um, the company ethos do you know every company, large or small, has an ethos or the driving force behind why you start your business in the first place? Um, many companies' own ethos can be found in a mission statement. In the Tesla mission, is the to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy that electric vehicles can be burned quicker and more fun to drive than gasoline cars. Some of the ethos that Tesla has in the company are Number one, dedication. How hard an employee works and do their best to create the most efficient vehicle. Number two, integrity. An important aspect. Tesla is working for the better future to everybody by helping the planet. Number three, accountability. Their action, the ideas, is to lower the prices of the vehicle so that every car out in the trucks will be electric. And finally, the collaboration. They are many stations working together to create the best product to sell. So the next question is how you will describe the rubber training process. So let's talk about this and what is the rubber training process. But first we want to know what is the importance of the rubber training process. And the rubber training process is very important and perhaps is one of the most important parts in the manufacturing process. Because the robots without training are useless. And what am I trying to refer with this? Well, if you have your robot and you haven't given your commands, haven't given the commands or the codes that are necessary for do certain task, the robot will be useless because the robot wouldn't do the the, the things that they that the, the the robot should do. Or in other case, it just will be practically unmovable because the robot wouldn't do nothing and this is what I might or we are trying to refer with the train that without training are useless because couldn't do any type of task with the high quality that is needed or practically just were unmovable but now that we know that importance that the robot has that the robot have in this situation that needs to be trained um, we need to know why or what is exactly the robot training process, what it means or how could this affect the robots or practically the manufacturing process indeed. But when a robot is training means that the robot is receiving precise commands 
from us. So, like, we are giving the commands to the robot, and the robot is receiving that, and the robot will execute that. And if, when this robot is executing our commands and codes, and if it's okay, it means that the robot well, was trained successfully, but if this was not okay, the robot needs to be, or the codes that we sent to the robot needs to be correct. And when it's correct, it's trained. And this is why the word means the train the robots is practically to correct all those mistakes that the robot is having or is having issues in, in do some tasks and try to correct them. So we are training. It's practically like when we are trying to train for any type of things of the life. We fail, but we need to correct them. We need to rise up. So practically it's the same thing here. Because the robot is receiving the precise commands from the human through algorithms and codes. It means that with the codes and algorithms, the, depending on what language we are using, the, the robot will learn that and he will learn how to behave in any specific situation. Because this is not just in any type of situation, it's in a specific situation that the robot is commanding. So, practically, that is what is the robot training process, because it's practically like any learner. First, under understanding a lesson that is given, and then applying that knowledge. It's basically that. It's basically that. And if in any case are issues, they are immediately applied the necessary corrections until, well, the perfect functioning. So, uh, trying to say it just in one word, or some words, the training process is uh, try to the, give to the robot the certain algorithms and codes to the perfect function. And if there are issues, there, there needs to be corrections. And those corrections is practically the training that is given to the robot. So this is basically what is the robot training process. Fourth question. What was Elon Musk's response when facing production delays? Compared to what other people would have done, such as demanding that the problem be fixed immediately, communicate publicly that delivery deadlines will be denied due to difficulties that are not mentioned, or just get on the problem and leave everyone in the dark. Contrary to common expectation, with deadlines looming, Elon Musk holds an event where people who pre-purchase can test drive the eco. Because Elon Musk is determined to keep Tesla's wedding customers happy. The question number five says, what is the battery capacity of Tesla electric cars? In an electric cars, conserving the battery power is so important the designers put much effort into reducing the drag. The company used thousands of small lithium ion cells like a laptop batteries, thank you to these regular batteries, the company say the Model S has Archibald a top range of 480 kilometers, once you have 250 to 300 miles of range, you know then you are in a different usage mode, you are in a range that is equivalent to most gasoline cars can be charged 100 kilometers every hour from a regular power outlet the car chargers to full capacity in 50 minutes but you don't have to do you can charge it once a week and now it's time to talk about the one pedal driving features that the tesla's cars have and this is really interesting, actually, because the Tesla's cars 
are revolutionary not just a feature of one type of car or not it's just trying to do a revolution of all the future of the cars and that is really important not just in the technology part it's just in how we see the cars because all the how we how we drive a car will change a lot we have now the difference with a manual car and with an automatic car uh, practically the difference is all the changes of velocities and as well the clutch pedal that is just in manuals and in automatic is just erased but we are talking about something bigger here because the one pedal driving car is a really interesting feature that Tesla's cars have this is one of the most revolutionary parts that this technology have and the technology behind them is really curious so let's take a look of this so um, talking about the Tesla's cars always brings it to pedals like an automatic car the acceleration pedal and the the brake pedal the clutch pedal like the manual cars is not anymore like in a normal automatic car is not here but it's really cool because it's just an electric car it has two pedals one for brake and another for acceleration like it's so like always but the difference the difference is when you are in motion my friend because when you are in the in a highway or you are just in the way and you are accelerating you will notice that the car accelerate a lot just for say you can pass to zero kilometers per hour to 100 kilometers per hour in just three seconds that's a lot it's so fast and the torque is as well really fast but I think that I'm on focus on the pedal driving system because the pedal driving systems is that when you are at certain speed in and in, in the highway you will notice that when you stop pushing the accelerator the car just will slow down until stop quickly so like if you like if you were using the brake pedal but you are not using the one you're not using the brake pedal, you're just a stop pushing the accelerator. And this is revolutionary. Because you don't need the, the, the brake pedal anymore. Basically, the brake pedal is just for emergencies or when you need to stop immediately. Because yeah, you can stop stop when you stop pushing the accelerator, but you need to wait a little bit because the, the car needs to be slowed down. And it will depend on what speed you have if you are having a lot of speed for the car will take more time to you know brake immediately to 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 just stop and for that case when you need to stop it immediately you have the, the brake pedal this is just for emergencies or where you need to stop uh, just in the moment but if you just need to disaccelerate you just need to slow you just need to stop pushing the, the acceleration and the car at certain point of time will stop that's amazing you can just uh, you can just um, practically drive with one pedal and this is what the one pedal driving consists it's not too much time when you are just stop pushing the accelerator and the car will stop it's not too much time but for that reason, the car includes the, the brake pedal. And for all the types of years in electric technology, the most astonishing part, and this is really astonishing, that I want to say. When you are slowing your car, the batteries are being recharged for the opposing force. And that's amazing, because you can, you can imagine that this is like unlimited power, man. This is like unlimited energy. Perhaps it's like that, it's just like the title, but also you use more energy and you just uh, strike back a little bit of energy. But the thing is that 
you are recharging the batteries when you try when you brake or just slow down the car. This is for the kinetic energy that the kinetic energy uh, for the opposing force uh, recharge the batteries with the rotors that the the car has. So when the car is slow down the car, where, where the car is slowing down, uh, the rotors will will activate it, and those rotors will generate the kinetic energy that the kinetic energy uh, that that energy converts to electric energy that recharges the batteries. So this is amazing, and it can it can help you to to always have the better performance of your car and practically the engineers behind this are just amazing and this is as astonishing um, part but I think that as well and again I'm on focus a little bit and I'm going to focus again on the one pedal driving so just for say and with the one pedal driving is practically that you can drive with just one pedal that is the accelerator pedal and when you are accelerating, you the drive the car is moving, moving forward. But when you are stop accelerating, you will notice that the car will stop in certain time, not too much time. It's just some seconds. But you need to stop immediately for one reason. This is why you have the brake pedal. So. This is what is the one pedal driving feature on these cars. Seventh question. Why do you think Elon decided to wheel these cars out of aluminum? I believe that it to, it's to impart to the cost that it would have if still were used. Swear with a way that it will have that more energy will be needed for the vehicle to move forward. This first world for mass production is the vehicles was that they could have gone, such as making more use of battery power. Then came aluminum. Being a lighter and more manageable material, it is a good material for mass production with lower cost and being three times lighter than steel. Question number eight. What are the advantages of driving an electric car versus one powered with gasoline? It is faster than another sedan cars, more spacious than conventional cars. In Model S, has free space from the floor outwards. In fact, it's so big that we could fit seven people. The trunk in the front of the cars and arguably, you can put a whole bunch of stuff in there. Electric cars are future proof. Tesla, believe it, can lead a revolution and change the face of motoring forever cause. Is the first ever sedan powered purely by electricity. Depend of fuel price hikes. Tesla goals is to kill off the combustion engines and prove the electricity cars the price of annually gasoline in the United States is 1245 unlike the price spent with an electric car which is 423 so now it's time to talk about the Tesla's brake system and this is really related to the net to the before topic that we were talking that it was the one pedal driving feature on these cars, the Tesla's cars. So, talking about the brake system, we also know the two parts, the two ways to slow down or brake our car. The first one is like the normal, that is the brake pedal, that includes the car and 
This is basically when you need to stop it immediately, or for one reason or an emergency. And the other one, as we talked before, is in the situation that when you are in motion, and then you stop holding the accelerator pedal, because you can, you can just as well stop your car with your stop holding the accelerator pedal. But basically, this is a, that was a basically. But one type of processor, one type, any type of process, sorry, any type of process that when you are slow down, slow down in your car happens that the car always recharges the batteries with the vehicle and with the kinetic energy that is transformed into electric energy. And this is why when you are just slow down your car, that, that process is converting some rotors, the opposite force that is having the deceleration convert. This is, that name is, Name the kinetic energy. Some rotors convert the kinetic energy to electric energy. But we're we talk we talked this topic before, and perhaps you know too much things already to this. But we're going to try to de get deep now about the brake system a little bit and what is this process about about transform the, the electric energy. So the brake system, as we know, is practically the same disc that breaks on the wheels because Tesla used high performance Rumble brakes as the part of the electric power assist braking system so as you know you are just uh, disaccelerating stop holding the accelerator or just uh, using the brake pedal you will use in normal disc brakes like any type of car, and those brakes hold just hold the, the the wheels, and just it makes break the car. This is just the basically the like the basically braking of any type of car. But gets interesting when we are talking about what happens when you break the car. That what happens when you slow down the car. What happens with the energy? So we're going to try to. This, this process, we're going to try to, to talk more about it. So this process is, gener is named as regenerate, regenerative braking. Regenerative braking is the look like really technology uh, topic, but the vehicle's kinetic energy is diverted away from the wheels toward the motors. This is what the first thing happens. And then the kinetic energy uh, turns the motor's shaft and the motors act like a generator with the crank so this kinetic energy energy is diverted away from the wheels and pass to the motor pass towards the motor and when it's in the motor this uh, acts like a generator with a crank and that and that kinetic energy is converted to electric to ele electrical energy in the motor, so uh, this is routed into the batteries and is stored. And this is basically how the regenerative braking uh, consists: is convert the kinetic energy that was given uh, for this for the slow down in the car, and that energy is converted to the electrical energy thanks to the motor that acts like a generator and is stored in the batteries, into the batteries. And this is uh, okay for the Tesla brake system. And I hope you understand this. We now go to the last question. Then question. If you had the chance to implement a new feature, what would it be? Because you won't always be able to find a charging station, I would implement a solar panels that can be deployed on top of the car. That would be on a sunny day. But it won't always be like that. In those cases, it would be wise to carry a portable battery for the Tesla. 
in those cases. So thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you like it and you understand everything or one type of process about the Tesla's cars and the manufacturing process and all inside the Tesla's cars. It was really interesting and I hope you find it that way as well. So see ya and until next time.